stampers, it's Kelly Atchison at astampabump.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. And today, as promised on my Wednesday video, I'm going to show you how to make this basket weave hot air balloon card. Isn't this cute? Now this weave down the side is an oldie but goodie. This came out several years ago and I thought I needed to bring it back because I thought the basket weave went well with the basket idea for your hot air balloon. So it kind of goes together, right? And this is a technique card that I will be sending out to my online VIP club members. So what's that all about? Well, if you place a minimum order each month with me for six months, you can belong to my VIP online ordering club. And each month I will send you a card made using the technique and also an instruction card with the technique on it so that you can make up a little booklet of these. After you've been in the group for a while, you'll accumulate quite a few of these. If that's something you're interested in, please pop me an email at kelly at estampabove.com and I'd be happy to share the link to all the details for that group. At the end of six months, you'll enjoy ordering $30 free merchandise of your choice through me. So yay, it's a, it's a pretty cool deal, right? With, this is a template that I will also include with um, everybody that's in my VIP online club. I will mail this along with your card and instruction sheet. I'll also have this template on my blog, astampabove.com on January 27th, 2017 so that you can print it. This will be a PDF file. You can open it and print it out so you'll have it to make this card also. I am using Knight of Navy cardstock at eight and a half by five and a half. A piece of our carried away designer series paper that is three and a quarter by five and a half. Whisper white that is five and a quarter by three and a piece of Whisper white for our banner that is three and a quarter by one. And also a piece of our Calypso Coral Thick Baker's Twine. This is 19 inches long. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make this card. I'm gonna take my card base and fold it in half. Burnish that edge to get a nice crisp fold. And then you're gonna take your template and you're gonna cut out one of these templates for your basket weave. You want to make sure that you cut along the solid line here because that's going to go up against the fold on your card. And I'm just going to trim this down a little bit. You're going to need something to secure the template onto your card and I recommend a couple paper clips. Now I'm lining the solid edge line here up with the fold side of my card, okay? You want to make sure that this first cut line is down about an eighth of an inch or so from the top of your card. And you don't want this last line down here to be going off your card. So you want to be mindful of that. You're just going to center this and make sure that you're not going to cut the ends off when we start doing the cutting. I'm going to secure this with a paper clip. Make sure your paper clip stays away from where you're going to be cutting because you don't want to wreck your scissors. I've done that before. It is not fun. Not fun at all. It will make you cranky. Oh my, it will make you cranky. Okay, your slash lines are going to be facing down on your card and then you're just going to cut on each line. So far, pretty easy, right? The one thing you want to make sure you're doing is cutting all the way to the end of each line. That's very, very important. So sometimes scissors don't cut to the end of the line. If that's the case, make sure that you adjust and make it go all the way to the end of the line. I should say sometimes scissors don't cut all the way to the end, the tips of the scissors. That's what I meant. That sounded crazy, didn't it? Just like, you guys are probably like, what is she talking about? So you want to make sure that you're actually getting these lines cut all the way to the end. This is like the hardest part of this. So pretty easy so far, right? And you 
want to use a pretty good pair of scissors because cutting through two layers of cardstock isn't the easiest thing in the world. So we're going to remove our paper clips and our template, and this is what we're going to have. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut off this piece right here. Not this piece, but this little V, I call it, right here. And you're going to put your scissors in here, and you want to cut it off straight across the bottom so that it's lined up with the bottom of the card. You're going to cut straight. And if it sticks in there a little bit, whoops, that one stuck a little bit, you want to make sure you're cutting that so we don't have any ugly little frayed edges sticking in there. So, so far, that's what we've done. See that little frayed edge? That's kind of what I'm talking about. I'm going to just turn that off because I don't like it. All right, so why would I trim this off of this piece that I just cut out? We're going to use this at the end, so don't lose this little V. Next, you're going to open your card up. This is the outside of my card, and you're going to skip this first V that's cut and go to the second one. You're going to gently fold that down and tuck it under there. Did you see that? Let's try it again. You're going to do the same thing with the next one. Gently fold it down and tuck it. Skip and gently fold down and tuck it. So you're going to skip one and fold one. Skip one and fold one. Isn't this simple? It looks so complicated. I know my stampers that have made this card so far this month at my stamp clubs have looked at it and went, oh my lord, and you can just see, you can see the panic in some of their eyes going, what is she going to make us do tonight? <laughs> and then when it was all done with, they're like, that was so simple. I'm like, I know I told you, right? So just remember, things aren't always as they appear. Now, I just put some glue on the V that we cut off, and we're going to tuck that under there and bring it right up here to the top of our card so we can continue that pattern. So we cut it off here and put it up here. Isn't that beautiful? I just love this. And I think it's so cool that I've got a basket weave on a card that has a basket on it, right? So I thought it was really just appropriate. All right, next we've got a little bit of stamping to do. All right, I'm bringing in the big dogs here. I've got my stamps and my ink. I'm using Soft Sky and Night of Navy ink. I'm just going to bring in a piece of paper here to protect my desktop. This is the inside layer that's going to go on the inside of our card. So I'm going to stamp that greeting first with Night of Navy ink. Ooh, that turned out really good, right? And then I'm going to stamp some cute little clouds. And you just stamp those randomly across the top. And next I wanted a hot air balloon on the inside of my card. Make sure you're decorating the insides of your cards. You know how I, I am forever preaching that, but it really does take, you know what? It's that little extra effort that takes your card to amazing, right? People recognize things like that. Okay, there we go. Here's the inside of our card. Super simple. The outside, I'm using the Carried Away Designer Series paper. Isn't this cute? One side of most of these has hot air balloons and the other side is just a random pattern like this. And a couple of them, the clouds and hot air balloons. This is really pretty paper. This is one of our celebration selections. What does that mean? That means that when you purchase $50 in any product from our big catalog, our spring catalog, our clearance rack, you get to choose a free item out of our celebration brochure. And this could be your free item. You get 12 sheets of this gorgeous paper. And it's a perfect match to this lift me up and up and away bundle. If you buy these two items together, you can get a discount on them. You get 16 different stamps in here and a whole bunch of thinlets that go with this set. So next I'm gonna come in and 
glue down my designer series paper. And because this is going right up to the edge, I like to kind of hold my card up like this so that it just makes it easier for me to get it all the way up to the edge where it belongs. Okay, cool. And then we're going to do our other grading right here. It says, sending smiles across the miles. Uh, I always like it when things turn out straight. It doesn't happen all that, all that often. So, you know, oh, look, I just smeared it. Dang it. I should have let that dry for a few seconds. Let's turn it over and try again. We'll see if I can get it straight the second time around, right? I did. Yay. Okay. I'm just going to set that aside so it can dry for a second. I don't want to mess it up a, a second time, right? Okay, while I'm doing that, I'm going to show you. Um, I chose to use the colors of cardstock that are listed on the back of our designer series paper. Each one of our packs of designer series paper tells you what the coordinating colors of cardstock are. So I've got Mint Macaron, Peekaboo Peach, and Watermelon Wonder. And those are the colors that I'm gonna to use to go on the back of my hot air balloon. I'm going to lay this down on Knight of Navy cardstock and I'm going to run this through my Big Shot on the precision plate because this is very intricate. So hang on, I'll be right back. All right, so once I have that done, I'm going to bring that into my die cutting brush with the foam pad and I've got it in this little paper pumpkin box. This is perfect for catching all those bits and pieces. That popped right out of there. And you're gonna be rather aggressive when you use the dye brush on this because look at all the intricate little pieces. And that comes right off. And then I can just dump my little bits and pieces right in there. And I'm gonna do a little bit more of this. I would have liked that to stay in the dye a little longer because then I can be a little more aggressive with poking this out. So that turned out pretty darn good. Okay, we've got just a couple to poke out here. Usually when I do this, if you leave the die on your cardstock, you can really go crazy with the brush and almost all of these little pieces fall right out. So I love that. If you don't have one of these die brushes and you have intricate dies, you know, similar to this one, please invest in it. It'll make your life so much easier. All right, so here's our hot air balloon. And then I wanted to show you what I did with the um, pieces that layer behind this. I took each one of these layering pieces and I put it on the Mint Macaron cardstock, the um, Peekaboo Peach, and also the Watermelon Wonder. But I cut out all of these pieces, even though I only need one or two for my one balloon card. Um, I thought I'm gonna I'm having this this is gonna be one of my classes for next week my technique Tuesday so I'll just cut out a whole bunch of each color and put them in containers like this okay so each um, size is in a different container and that way it'll be easier for people to pick and choose but you can do this all at once instead of doing you know just making one card let's just make a make a whole bunch of them I like that idea so that's what I did with that I'm going to take my banner here now that is dry and ready for me to touch it and punch it out with the triple banner punch. I thought when this punch came out, it was kind of silly. It's like, yeah, you know what? I can cut my own banners. But <laughs> once I got it, I can't even tell you how much I love it. It's so simple and it takes all the guesswork out of it. and It turns out perfect every time. Love it. It does one inch, one and a half, and two inch banners. And of course, you can do any increments in between there by just kind of hanging on to them and putting them in there and punching them also. So I put some dimensionals on the back of my banner. I'm just going to bring that in right here. Let me clean up some of this stuff so I don't drop my card in it. I've been known to do that before. One of each one of these shapes I've brought in. And I'm going to um, glue these to the back of my hot air balloon. If you watched my Wednesday video, you saw this amazing tip. I put some liquid glue on a paper plate and used a sponge to put on the back of my intricate hot air balloon here. Because you know when you do 
squirting glue all over, it always ends up coming out the front. It's a big old huge mess. You know what I'm talking about, right? This way you have no mess. And you can just bring in your pieces and layer them right here. This is so pretty. I just love this whole rainbow of colors. It's adorable. My husband would go, where's the doorbell? Nope, I said adorable. Yeah, no, it's kind of <laughs> dorky like that. That's okay, right? And here's the little basket. This dries super fast, so you might need to reapply if you have a big area, but isn't that an awesome way to um, adhere things to the back or adhere your um, intricate die cuts to your cards? Because like I said, you know, you know what I'm talking about. The glue always comes squishing out. So once we have that done, we're gonna put a couple dimensionals on here to hold our hot air balloon. And I need to do, whoops, I've got some here, some halvesies because I want to put one on my basket here. There we go. You ready for this? Stinking cute card. And it really was quite easy to make. I mean, it looks like holy cow, but it's not really holy cow. There's only one thing left, and that is our Thick Baker's Twine. And I'm just gonna bring that in and we'll see how good I can tie a bow in front of you guys. You know, that's always kind of a little stressful thing to do, tying a bow in front of people. So I want you to all hold your breath. I'll try to be quick so nobody passes out. See if Kelly can do this. Oh, I did it, I did it, yay. Here's another little tip for you. I noticed a lot of times when I'd wanna pull this so that my loops got smaller, when I would just pull the ends, it would make my baker's twine kind of curl up and then your bow looks kind of goofy and it doesn't lay nice anymore. Here's the little tip I found. Hang on to your loop and then pull your tail so you can guide it and keep it nice and straight. Same here, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Hang on to it while you pull it through there and it won't curl up and make your bow all silly looking. There we go, you guys. Isn't this adorable? I love it. Sending smiles from across the miles. Hope your day is on cloud nine. Happy birthday. Basket weave technique. And again, make sure that you stamp up your envelope so that it looks really cute. This is just an old return address um, stamp that I had from a few years ago. If you would like to get more information about my VIP online club, please make sure you look on my blog, stampabove.com, on January 27th, 2017. I will have a link to all the information there. I will also put a link on my YouTube channel underneath this video, if you watch it on YouTube. Underneath the video is a little bit of information, and it'll say, See More. You need to click on the See More, and then you can find the link to um, my blog for this project. And that will then have the link to my VIP online club where I would send you this card in the mail this month and also a instruction card like this with the technique on it. So you can make up a whole booklet of these. And let me show you some of the um, techniques that I have done. These are all, some of the cards. Some of these are very, um, like a couple years old. Some are pretty new. But these are all techniques with the instructions and then the technique. Very cool. You can make up a whole booklet. Ooh, look, that was one of my favorites. You can make up a whole booklet of these. Put a hole in it and put a big ring on it, and you're going to have a book of techniques that you can refer back to when you get ready to sit down and stamp. So I hope you'll take a look at that. I would love to have you in my VIP online club. And don't forget, it's celebration right now, so you can get this designer series paper pack for free or a bunch of other things to choose from also that you could get for free with your $50 order. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, pick me. I would love to earn your business. You can pop me an email at kelly at stampabove.com. I'll send you the catalogs that we have right now. And also make sure you go check out my blog, stampabove.com. There's lots of great projects on there, lots of good information. I try to keep everybody updated about what's happening with Stampin' Up. So thanks so much for stamping with me today. And add a little sparkle to someone's day. Send them a card.